Well, I, kn- I know it's a gorgeous day out there again. It's yes. kind of a little spring fever with these warm days we've had lately. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you want to give maybe just another minute or so for They are in Gary, I believe. Okay. We'll go ahead and get started. Well, welcome everyone to our March synchronous meeting of the assessment playbook for distance and blended learning. My name is Carrie McDaniel and I'm joined this evening by Misty Higgins. And as you know, we are professional learning coordinators in the Office of Teaching and Learning Division of Program Standards at the Kentucky Department of Education. And also joining us in the background as a producer tonight is Thomas Klaus, Academic Program Manager at the Kentucky Department of Education. And he will be sending you into breakout rooms throughout the evening and posting information in the chat. For those of you who were unable to attend our February synchronous meetings, we just wanted to remind you that a link to those video recordings can be found in your assessment playbook study plan in Google Classroom for you to watch at your convenience. Before we get started, you may want to grab a notebook in case you'd like to jot down notes during the session tonight. If you prefer to type, you can just open up a Google or Word document and you are going to have some time to jot down your thinking before we go into a breakout room. So you'll want a notebook handy You may also want to have your phone handy to take a picture of the screens prior to going into a breakout room so you can quickly look back at the questions that are the focus of that breakout room and just know we will post those in the chat as well. And finally, for the last piece, you may want to have your text handy as we will be referencing optional places to follow along in your assessment playbook. So I'm going to pause for just a few seconds and let you get those things around you. And then if you are new to Zoom or if it is a platform you don't use as often, you may want to change to speaker view to allow you to see the screen better and the people you are in a breakout room with by viewing them along the top. But if you are familiar with Zoom, feel free to change it to your own personal settings preference, but you'll find where you can change the view in the top right hand corner here. The other thing we wanted to point out is that we're going to be using the chat feature throughout the night. So if you look at the ribbon along the bottom of your screen, depending on what device you're on, you'll see the speech bubble with the word chat. So if you click on that icon, it will open up a chat box on the right hand side of your screen. And the very last thing I wanted to point out, one of the other purposes aside from giving you opportunities to talk with colleagues from across the state that we hope to provide you with tonight is how can you structure engagement in the virtual setting? Because we've heard a lot of conversations from teachers and district leaders from across the state around engagement in the virtual setting, we wanted to intentionally model strategies tonight for collaboration that you can have in the distance and blended learning settings. So to help us with managing some of that collaboration, we will be broadcasting messages to you in your breakout rooms. On most devices, the place that you're going to see most broadcasts is a blue ribbon ribbon at the top center of your screen. And just know that the blue ribbon will say from Thomas Klaus and will tell you what the directions are. Um, So we'll be managing some of those breakout room interactions with that broadcast feature. So that's all of the housekeeping items. I wanted to jump right into our purpose for this session. So our purpose in terms of learning goals. So tonight we're going to be looking at learning more about the enduring processes that the text refers to as assessment playlists because we know that they are foundational to really helping us match our assessment processes to our purpose. No one assessment or assessment type can do it all. Now the two success criteria that we have 
One is that you can actively participate in professional dialogue with your colleagues. So really balancing sharing your ideas while listening to the ideas of others. And second, that you can use the ideas from the text and the conversations you have tonight to make improvements to the assessment practices back in your own school or district. So tonight is really about you having conversations to deepen your understanding and hearing what other people are doing. So I'm gonna turn it over to Misty at this time. So to ensure that we give you those opportunities to have professional dialogue, we are going to be utilizing breakout rooms throughout the session. Um, you, you are going to be with the same people in the breakout room each time. So we wanna start with giving you a chance to meet those people. So in just a second, when we send you to your breakout room, we want you to determine who will be person one, two, three, and four using alphabetical order of your first name. So just as an example, if these were the people in a breakout room, you can see that Angie would be person one, her name comes first alphabetically, David would be number two, Melissa would be number three, and Sam would be number four. And so once you've made that determination, please make sure you write down your number so that you can remember, because we're gonna use that to help us structure and manage both the breakout room and the whole group conversations throughout the session. And then the last thing we want you to do is a single round robin to get to know each other a little bit better. Single means one time around. And when it's your turn, you're gonna share your response to all three of these items. So your name, your role and location, and then what is your favorite restaurant? And then in that restaurant, what would be your go-to meal? So I'm gonna pause, just give you a little bit of think time. How will you respond to all three of those items when it's your turn in the single round robin? When you get to the single round robin in your breakout room, number ones, would you please start it? So you'll go in order of one, two, three, and four. Now know that some breakout rooms may not have four people exactly. You may only have three. So obviously you just need to number off and do the single round robin going one, two, three. Um, you could possibly have five people in your breakout room. So in that case, you know, just make sure you're adding that fifth person that you number off one through five. But again, when you get to the single round robin, number ones will start it. Now we're going to give you about four minutes in the breakout room to do everything that you see on this slide. So if you want, please feel free to take a picture of this and we've also posted it in the chat for you to be able to reference in your breakout room. So we will see you back here in about four minutes. We should have about 20, I think, total participants. Okay, I'll watch the number. Welcome back. Looks like we have most everyone back. We're waiting on a couple more. So moving on, as stated earlier, chapter two really focuses on those enduring processes called assessment playlists that help us to intentionally match an assessment type to our intended purpose. They are called playlists because just like a song playlist, we often select songs that suit or match our mood. When we're happy, we choose upbeat songs. When we are melancholy or down, we often select slower tempo songs. And the text suggests we should use a similar mentality for assessments. So matching the assessment type to our intended purpose by selecting from a playlist of options. So assessment playlist one, assessment through universal response. Assessment through universal response is an efficient way for teachers to elicit evidence of student learning all at once. 
It allows the teacher opportunities to receive immediate feedback from students in order to monitor, monitor student understanding and engage misconceptions, which move the learning forward. Waterfall chats, hand signals, response cards, emoji meters, and polling are just a few examples of universal responses. Response cards are a technique that have been used in face-to-face -face classrooms for years. Many of us is, have probably uh, used whiteboards for students to hold up and show their answers or responses to a question. And this technique has been easily adapted to the virtual setting as students are able to hold up a whiteboard or pre-printed card with their answer on it with cameras on. CD cases can function, for example, as a makeshift whiteboard, or they can be filled with colored construction paper to indicate a yes or no response. Um, such as green for yes and red for no. For students who have access to printers at home, teachers can also create a Word or Google Doc to share with students electronically, which contains various response cards they can then cut apart and hold up during synchronous sessions together. So this could include things like true or false, or responses such as, I need help. Can you repeat that, please? Numbers one through four for self-assessments. Um, mathematical symbols such as greater than, less than, or equal to, or the letters A through D for multiple choice questions. So response cards help teachers quickly monitor student understanding to clear up any misconceptions during instruction. Hand signals are another example of a universal response which can be utilized in both face-to-face, -face, remote, or hybrid learning environments. Hand signals can be used with preschool and kindergarten learners all the way to adult learners to do a quick temperature check and formatively see where students are in their thinking. This universal response is also helpful in reaching consensus among group members in a less threatening and democratic way. And so here's an example of one way you might use hand signals in the blended or virtual setting. You can see that the teacher has clearly communicated what each number of fingers represents. After students have shared their hand signal, the teacher then places students in breakout rooms based on their level of understanding. Students with little or no understanding of the topic remain in the main room with the teacher while students one, two, four, and five go into breakout rooms together. Now, the threes get placed in a room to hear the perspectives of one, twos, fours, and fives. Of course, you could structure this however you'd like to suit both student and adult, adult learners, but this is a great way to really kind of differentiate and personalize this for students. So for our first content, content breakout room discussion for you, on the screen on the right-hand side are some examples of peer and self-assessment from the text. Now, the questions we want you to think about. Number one, why is it so important to build in opportunities for universal responses? What are some examples of how you have used universal responses in the distance and blended learning settings? And then finally, what are some challenges you have faced in regards to universal responses and how have you addressed those challenges? So everyone grab your notebook or sheet of paper, whatever you're taking notes on, and you're gonna have in just a moment about eight minutes in your breakout room to share your thinking around these three questions. So for right now, I'm going to pause and give you some think time to jot down. And you can prioritize which of these three questions you most want to respond to. And Carrie, for some reason, I don't know why it's showing um, playlist four, when this is playlist one and the questions are right, but our examples are wrong. So I just put in the chat those examples of universal response so you can have those to reference as you guys are thinking through those questions. Okay, thanks Misty. Not sure what happened there.
Okay, so here's what's going to happen when we go into the breakout room. We're going to do a timed round robin. So each person will take one minute to share out one idea around any of those three questions. So we're going to start with number ones. And after number ones have shared, we will announce to switch to number twos by using that broadcast message at the top. And once everyone has had a minute to share out, your group will have three or four minutes at the end to have an open discussion. And we will broadcast Windows to begin that open discussion as well. Um, we're going to pause before we start the timer to give everyone a chance to get into their breakout room. So we'll let you know and give you a broadcast of message of when to start. So if you haven't already, get ready. Um, and be prepared to share out in your breakout room and we will see you back here in just a few minutes. About it, And I said, well, when you think about it, when you think about prom, you know, it's all about really getting dressed up with your friends. <laughs> Welcome back everyone. All right, now that we have, it looks like most everyone back, here's what we want you to do. We want you to think about what is your one main takeaway, something that really resonated with you from the conversations you had in your breakout room. So if you were number four in your group, we want to invite you to unmute and share out, or you can share in the chat. What's one big takeaway you or someone in your group had? Um, we found that we're all, um, we all enjoyed the waterfall. We really hadn't tried that until uh, the first session with uh, Dr. Fisher, and we really, we really liked that. Um, but we are finding that it's still difficult to, to just get everyone to participate from, you know, like, like one of our participants was talking about, she said that the younger kids, you know, they're really, wanting to share but when you get to that middle school and even up through adult it's really difficult to get people to turn their cameras on to turn their mics on so that was that was one of the things that you know we talked about yeah thank you for sharing that tanya and you know i think that's one of the things that we've continually heard from teachers and leaders across the state is how do you keep everyone engaged not just a, not just students but adults as well um, in this remote setting. So thank you for sharing that. Anyone else? Kim did share. I found it. Go right ahead, Michelle. Okay. Do we have more than one, Michelle? I'll go. Okay, so in our group, um, we said you're only as good as the technology that you have and, you know, your location. So we had somebody that was rural. I have a high level of poverty and socioeconomic. And so we're, we're dealing with those things. So you might have the best crafted uh, situation there and you're going to use all these things. But if it's a lag, if, you know, my hotspot is just not connecting, if there's those things, it creates a, a defeated kind of situation with kids. And so, you know, there, that is one of the challenges. The other thing that was mentioned was, wouldn't it have been great if we had had more time on, on the forefront to teach them about these things? And if we had even had this, these type of things in our pocket, the tools, go back a year ago, what, what a difference we could have made in this whole journey. I agree, Michelle. And, you know, I think that's what really speaks to the testament of how flexible teachers are and how incredible they are in, in handling this past year with pandemic teaching. Uh, but I agree, how great would it have been if we had had the foresight or, or the knowledge that this was coming so we could have better prepared for it. And I see Kim said in the, in the chat here that students are very honest with their responses in emoji meters and distance learning. So that looks like something that, that she's found um, to be very helpful as a good, good read on students thinking. Thank you, Michelle and Kim for sharing out. Anyone else?
Okay, so at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Misty. And just even thinking about what Michelle said, one thing that I have loved um, about this particular book, and especially this section on the assessment playlist, many of these are transferable to the face-to-face -face setting too. So it's it, as we learn about these strategies, we're more equipped than whichever situation we may face going into the future, because the reality is some virtual learning may stay around for some students in some form or fashion. But again, a lot of these are going to be transferable back face-to-face. So now what we are going to do is we are going to give you a quick overview of Playlist 2 and Playlist 3 before we send you back out to um, breakout rooms to have some conversation around these two playlists. So we're going to start with Playlist 2, which focuses on the assessment tool of TeachBack, one of my favorites. I really love this one. And if you were able to join us for that opening session with Doug Fisher um, or even watch the recorded version, he showed us a lot of great examples of this particular assessment tool. So Teach Back, it provides students with an opportunity to construct their knowledge in, um, by having them teach something they are learning to someone else. So some of the examples that the text provided, one was class Teach Back, where the audience would be their peers. So for example, at the beginning of a unit, teachers could give students all of the success criteria for that unit. Then what they could do is students could sign up for the success criteria that they want to create a video with them teaching about that success criteria. And then as they finalize that video with the teacher, the final version gets posted on the class website and then students are able to access videos of their peers, of their classmates, teaching them about the success criteria within the unit. And then in the distance learning setting, we can extend the audience to include family. So that's where we get teach back to the family. So students would create a video recording of them teaching something to a family member. And then with retelling, this is where students would create an audio or a video recording of them um, telling something in their own words, what they know about it, what they remember, either from a lesson, it could be from a video they've watched, or it could be from a text that they have read. And if we want to widen the audience even more beyond just their peers and their family, we could have students create those student created podcasts where they get to create and then um, produce and present the, uh, what information they know around a particular topic to an even wider audience. Written summaries provide a way for students to put their thoughts into word, like write it out into words in a concise way that could teach other people. And this, um, one of the great examples in the text for written summaries was like Twitter notes. And then finally, we could have students respond to the three clarity questions, whether it's through a video or audio recording or even in writing, where they respond to what did I learn? Why was it important that I learned it? And how do I know that I've learned it? All of those provide teachers a way to assess student understanding. In your text on page 41, the authors included a table of quality indicators to consider when using TeachBack as an assessment tool, whether it's formatively or summatively. And so just know that's a great reference. And one of the biggest things to remember about TeachBack is letting students know who is the intended audience. Now, Playlist 3 looked at assessment through composing. So Playlist 2 was TeachBack. Playlist three is assessment through composing. And this assessment tool lends itself to measuring student progress because teachers get a written product from the students that they can use to analyze and assess student understanding. So again, some of the examples that we see in the text. Interactive notebooks, they function much like physical notebooks in the face-to-face -face setting and provide students the opportunity to reflect on their learning over time. Generative sentences where you have students create sentences using a word with some additional parameters. I'm going to show you an example of that in just a minute. Written summaries, you will notice they were also on playlist two, but they fit here on playlist three because again, students are articulating their thinking through writing. With the one pager, this one is a great way to have students summarize their thinking on a topic in one page using text and images to really convey their understanding of a topic. 
And then annotations, and maybe some of us don't think that this is a way that we could assess student learning, but they give us a lens into student thinking because as students annotate a text, we can have them underlining what they think are the key ideas. They could put what they think is most important out in the margin in their own words, and they could also make connections to other information they've learned or other texts and articles that they've read. And then they submit those annotations and we're able to use those to assess students and understanding. And then finally, we have the five word summary. This is really a way for us to assess that students get the big ideas out of a lesson or out of maybe a text that they have been using. And here they get to work both individually and with small groups of peers and they reach consensus on what they think are the five most important words from that text or lesson. Then once they've reached consensus, they each draft a written summary using those five keywords. So lots of great ways that we can assess their understanding through composing. And again, going back to the generative sentence, we all have probably heard the thing before about we want to see if they understand key vocabulary, so have them use it in a sentence. This is a little twist on that that helps us to better assess their understanding. So instead of just giving them words to use in a sentence, we're going to also say like the position in the sentence that word might have to be along with suggested length. So like here you can see in the first example, they're using the word sell. It has to go in the third position of the sentence, and the sentence has to be more than six words in length. So it's just, again, a little creative way to see where students are in their understanding of key academic vocabulary we know they need to know. So that was a lot in two playlists, and we have some questions. But before we ever send you into your breakout room, grab your notebook because we want to give you some time to think about these questions. The first one, similar to the last time, why is it important to build opportunities for teach back and composing as part of our assessment toolbox in the classroom? Think about it formatively and summatively. Why are they so important? And then what are some examples that you can share of how you've used teach back or composing, whether it's in the distance learning setting or setting, the blended setting, or even in the face to face setting? And then finally, when you look on the right hand side at all of those great examples of ways that we can assess um, through teach back and composing, what are maybe some new ways that you could use teach back or composing with your students and what are some specific examples you could think of. And then if we have some like instructional leaders um, or principals in the group, I also want you to think about how could you use these to assess staff understanding around key professional learning that maybe you're having them take place in that's really kind of building their understanding over some key initiatives so you can even think about it through that lens. But I'm going to pause, give you all a little bit of time to jot down your thinking around these three questions. And then let's come back together because we're going to use a new structure in your breakout room this time. So we want everyone back together so you can kind of hear the instructions for how we're going to set up this breakout room conversation. So far, we've been using a lot of um, round robins in some form or fashion where it's a very specific turn that you're taking. You're going in a set order. We want this time to, uh, to show you a structure where you can allow for more cross conversation. So we're going to use a structure called talking chips. Now, it can go in any order and any person can start. But here's the key thing to remember about talking chips. Everyone has a chip that they are going to use and your chip is going to be your pen or your pencil. And what happens is when we start the conversation in your breakout rooms, any person can share an idea. All they have to do is hold up their pen or pencil to the screen. Then they share an idea around any of those three questions. When they're done, they lay their pen or pencil down. 
then another person will hold up their pen or pencil to show they want to share an idea and they can either share their own unique idea or they can elaborate on or make connections to previous ideas that have been shared during the conversation. Then once everyone on the team has had an opportunity to use their chip and to share an idea, then you would all pick your pen or pencils back up and you keep going round after round after round until we close the breakout room. So the thing to remember is that each round, once you've used your talking chip, you have to wait until everyone else has used theirs before you can share another idea, okay? So we're going back to these questions. Please feel free to take a picture of the slide. We've also put them in the chat, or, uh, the chat box for you to reference. And we're gonna give you about five minutes to seven minutes in your breakout room conversation around these questions using talking chips. Remember, anyone can start the conversation, but please wait until we do see that most people are in the breakout room before we have you start talking chips. So we'll see you all back here in about five to seven minutes. See a lot of people coming back in. Hopefully um, you had a great conversation. I know we may have cut some of you short. Sorry about that, but just for time's sake, we want to keep us moving. Um, I want you all to think what was one idea that really resonated with you from that breakout room conversation around teach back and composing. So I want everyone just to pause. What was that big idea and get that idea in your head? Number threes, we are going to let you be our lucky instant stars here. So if you are number three in your group, um, we would love to hear what your takeaway that one idea was. So feel free to either unmute or you can post it in the chat and I'm just gonna pause and open up the floor. Hi, the five word summary uh, was uh, a big aha for me and how that folks were using that with their adult learners. Yeah. Yeah, Mary, that's such a great one to use. Like at the, at the end of the, some professional learning that's occurred to really assess their take. I love that. Other number threes. Um, a takeaway for me was, and it was mentioned in the chat prior, and then uh, someone in our group gave a specific example, is things can go back and forth from uh, virtual setting to in person. And the example was the interactive notebooks that um, she shared that she uses those in, 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 in regular um, classroom instruction, and then that was an easy transfer for her students to uh, continue to use that uh, remotely, virtually. Absolutely, Ryan, and I love that, and I love time we can find tools um, and strategies that can work in multiple settings. It's, it's great when we can apply them to all of those different areas. Other takeaways? One of our takeaways um, went with the written summaries. Um, one of the ladies in our group, Ari, said she has always had her students do a written summary, a one-page summary on a note card. And they just kind of start out with, you know, they don't write very much. And then they get to where they're writing more. But then she, after they're doing that, she brings in skills that she's been teaching into those summaries. And it was um, tricky, but she figured it out how to, to make it virtual and use with slides and have them do it on slides so that the summaries were still taking place. And so when they transitioned back to school, that transition to those was really easy and seamless and probably had covered some skills she wouldn't have covered had she been in person, but because of virtual, she was able to hit on some of those skills and refer back to them. That's awesome. And again, hitting multiple things at one time. That's like what we all love to be able to do to make the most of the time that we have. I love that. Okay, for time's sake, we're gonna go ahead and move on. So Carrie, I'm gonna hand it over to you. Okay, thank you, Misty. 
So thinking about assessment, playlist number four, self and peer assessment. So the purpose of self and peer assessment is to help students manage their own learning. And students who manage their own le learning are able to set goals, make plans, monitor their progress, and adapt their approaches to learning. Essential to this process is being able to view their own work and the work of their peers critically and use it to make decisions about how to proceed in their learning. So just a few examples of self and peer feedback include no show charts, single point rubrics, color coded feedback, peer response to writing, and peer assisted reflection. So let's take a look at a few of these examples. So here we see an example of an elementary mathematics uh, no show chart. So you can see how the teacher has um, ha modeled for the student, obviously, and the student is able to show those processes there. Here's an example of a secondary social studies no show chart. And again, the student has written out how they can prove their thinking. Here's an example of a self-assessment where students monitor their level of understanding both before and after learning by measuring themselves against the success criteria for a given week's learning tasks. And we've seen this example before. But this is another great example of ways that students can measure themselves against those criteria. And then here we see an example of a single point rubric for fifth grade writing. So you've got the evidence of exceeding standards um, there against measured against the success criteria, as well as uh, showing areas where the student then needs to um, need some work. And so that's a great jumping off place in order to set goals with students. And so for our fourth content breakout room discussion for you tonight, on the screen on the right hand side are some examples of peer and self assessment from the text. Now the questions we want you to think about are why is it important to build in opportunities for self and peer assessment. What are some examples that you have used of self and peer assessment in the distance and blended learning settings. And then finally, what are some new ways you could use self and peer assessment in both the synchronous and asynchronous settings? So everyone grab your notebook or sheet of paper, whatever you're taking notes on, and you're going to have about six minutes in your breakout room to share your thinking around these three questions. So at this time, I'm going to pause and give you some think and jot down time.
Okay, so hopefully you've had an opportunity to capture your thinking and jot down a few notes. I would also encourage you, if you have your phone handy, you might want to take a quick picture of the screen so you can refer back to the to that while you're in your breakout room. And we're also going to post that in the chat for you as well. So here's what's going to happen. When we go into the breakout room, we're going to do a continuous round robin. So each person will share one idea around any of the three questions. So we're gonna start with number threes. And once number three has shared, you're gonna continue sharing with one idea around the group and then with number fours. When you have 60 seconds left, um, we're going to broadcast that countdown and we're going to also pause before we get started um, with the timer just to give everyone a chance to get settled into their breakout room. So please wait for that broadcasted message before starting your breakout discussion. So if you haven't already, go ahead and take a picture of your screen, be prepared to share in your breakout room, and then we'll see you back here in just a few minutes. I'm bringing them back. Okay. I'm always like, bring them back, start the recording again. Bring them back, start the recording. <laughs> I'm trying to make that my routine so I don't forget. <laughs> Carrie, I think we have most people back. Okay. So we have one final activity we want you to, we want to be sure that we have time for. So hopefully your reflections will really play out in this next um, activity that we have planned for you. So I'm gonna actually turn it over to Misty and let her share what we're going to do next. So we really wanted to use one of the assessment tools they talk about in the text. We've tweaked it a little bit for our purposes tonight, but it's a great way for us to kind of formatively assess um, your all's takeaways from this session. So we just kind of called it a tweet summary. So what we're gonna do is first, we want you to individually craft a tweet that summarizes your learning, your biggest takeaways from this session around assessment playlist. But your challenge is you have to do it in 30 words or less. So we're gonna pause and give you a couple of minutes to draft your individual tweet before we move you back into your breakout room for the last time. So grab your notebook and draft that tweet 30 words or less. Take about 30 more seconds. Okay. 
Okay, let's come back together and I'm gonna give you your next set of directions. So when you go into your breakout room, the first thing you're gonna do is a single round robin and each person is going to read their individual tweets starting with person number two. So you're gonna go in order of person two, three, four, one. Once each person has read their tweet, you are going to work together as a group to take the ideas from the individual tweets and put them into a group tweet. So it has to kind of summarize what everyone put in their individual or individual tweets, but again, 30 words or less for your group tweet. That's your challenge. Single round robin to share each um, of your tweets and then work together to come up with that tweet that's going to capture the ideas of everyone's individual tweets in 30 words or less. You're going to have about three to five minutes to draft this. So you're going to have to work kind of quick in there. And it's important that everyone knows what their final group tweet is before you come back to the main session and that you're all ready to share that if called up on. So just kind of giving you a heads up on that one. So make sure everyone knows what that final group tweet is. So we'll see you back here in just a few minutes. And recording. And mute myself. <laughs> We know that not, not every group maybe got completely finished. Hopefully you were able to, to draft something out. Um, and so number ones, if you were number one in your team, would you please either unmute or you can post it in the chat, but I just think it would take a while to type that out. So number ones, we would love to hear the group tweet from your team. Yes, we put group one. We said it, assessments are like genres of music, empowering to the learner and critical to the creator. Everyone's story can be told. That is awesome, Amy. Thank you all for sharing. All right. You gotta thank Taylor. <laughs> he did a great job. <laughs> Another number one. Will you share yours with us, please? I'm number one, but I didn't write down what Maggie said. So Maggie's gonna have to say it for us. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to add in the chat, Kristen, to see if you wanted me to read. So we put, it's exactly 30 words. So just, <laughs> just know <laughs> we come in, we're real, real followers. It's important to develop mirrors to allow each of us to reflect what we know and who we are. Young, old, in-person, virtual, we all need opportunities to be seen. And make that. I am blown away by what you're coming up with. All right, other number ones. Um, I was a number one for our group. And um, we agreed on having a variety of assessment tools allows teachers to help students focus, engage, and learn to assess their own learning of the success criteria as appropriate for the unit. Awesome. Thank you very much, Ari. Love that. And I love that connection back to success criteria too. That's what we're really assessing. All right. And there should be, is there another number one? Is that our last number one? Um, yeah. And that's not, and I have to tell you, Dina should actually be talking, but I was the scribe <laughs> and um, we had it in the chat. We left the room, it did not save in the chat. So this is not oh. the original tweet and I'm very sad because they said some really good stuff and I was the scribe. So yeah. Kim, is it this book gave us the insightful and creative assessment ideas to push yes. off our thinking and lead our students to create meaning and think deeply to share their learning with purpose. Yeah, there's a couple of extra words there. So sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. That's still really good. Thank you guys, because I know we kept you a little bit late to do that, but that is such a great way to really see what people are walking away with in their understanding. So quickly, we will wrap it up. Our next, and it's our last synchronous session for this um, spring book study is April 19th, same time, 4.30 to 5.45. We know that many of you all are getting ready to head to spring breaks. We wish you a relaxful, a restful spring break. where You can kind of come back recharged through that final push through the end of the school year. We are so thankful you took the time tonight to join us. And as 
please, if you have questions, please feel free to reach out to neither me or Carrie. Um, and just a final thank you to Thomas for doing all the work in the background for us. So everyone have a great evening. I know I tempted you with food at the beginning. So now go and have your dinners. <laughs>